Hello and welcome to the last word on Spurs. We are your award winning Tottenham Hotspur podcast. We are back for a third time this week. And I'll say this, look, not often on last one on Spurs do we really want to do shows that we quite simply don't want or have to do. But I think given the nature of what discussion we're going to have here, it's a really important topic that I think, again, has been very much transcending around the fan base since really it was announced. And again, hence the reason why I think we as a platform for the need to bring on these wonderful people that are going to give you some enlightenment about their feelings on relation to the topic we're going to discuss. If you're listening for the first time, you can find us on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're across all major audio platforms. We're, of course, on X, we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook too. I'm joined alongside me by my co-host for this one, Jason McGovern is back. Jace, love to have you alongside me, mate. I know really, um, again, look, we've been together for many years doing these shows. It's probably one, Jace, we wouldn't ever want to do, but one that we maybe feel we have to do. Is that fair for me to say, Jace? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, be it you're a senior citizen or not, I think this is one of those one of those things, a little bit like when Tottenham uh, furloughed people, that you just think this is inherently wrong. And so uh, I, I think everyone would, would say that. It's a, it's a decision that you, you just... It's, it's one of those... It's a bit like a Mike Ashley at Newcastle, isn't it? Just when things seem to be going quite smoothly... And Tottenham think, I know what we can do. Let's let's chuck a spanner in the works and see if we can roll people up a bit. And uh, Mike Ashley style uh, management. But yeah, absolutely, Rick. Yes, there you go. I mean, Jason, as always, diplomatic, puts it in such a, a kind way as that. Look, we're pleased to welcome uh, two guests on the last one of Spurs. One you'll know very, very well from her time, of course, on the Supporters Trust. And by God, did she fight our corner of Spurs fans. We'd like to welcome back first, and foremost, Anthula is back on Arsenal Spurs. Anth, lovely to have you join us. I would hey, say, yeah. how you been? Never a quiet day, was it? Never a quiet moment for you. Always no. in and around somewhere <laughs> fighting a course. Yep, nice to be back, though. It's nice to see you guys. Um, Bless you. Likewise. But yeah, always ticketing, isn't it? Yep, always something happening with Tottenham. And joining Anthula on this one, we're pleased to welcome Annalise to the show. Annalise, lovely to have you making your debut on Arsenal Spurs. I'm sure you'd rather have done it in better circumstances and conditions. How are you? Love to have you join us. Yeah, great. Great. Thank, thanks for asking me on, Ricky. Yeah, it'd be nice to talk about something more uh, joyful and uplifting. But, you know, this is what Tottenham does to us. Mm, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I say, look, to be fair, this season, it's been one, I think, on the whole, I would say that there's been an element of real hope, optimism from the appointment of Ange Postacoglu, which I know has been clouded to some degree from, again, the powers that be with elements around ticketing uh, decisions, obviously, that are taken up the hierarchy that then are fed down to the fans that have to somehow accept some decisions, the nature that they're bringing us together for. And uh, just to give you an understanding as to why we are here, for those that aren't aware, Spurs announced this month they would be increasing the syndicate ticket prices for the 24-25 campaign by 6%. But alongside that, the club also announced they would be removing the concession for new senior ticket holders aged 65 and above from the following season, whilst reducing the discounting stages for those seniors currently holding such tickets. Now, there has been a movement that has started online, Save Our Seniors, that I'm pleased to say Anthula and Annalisa here to represent. And what I will do at this stage, if I can, is I'll just hand the floor over to Anthula and Annalise to tell us a little bit more about that fan movement, what these guys are here for, what, of course, is the main aim of this show itself and the main aim of what they're trying to do and ultimately how fans can hopefully play a part in coming together and fighting the powers that be. So whoever wants to come in there first, and Annalise, feel free to do so from your side. Yep, sure. Um, so, I mean, to start off with, what is this movement um, and who we are? So we're just an independent group that has come together. We're formed of people that are former uh, Supporters Trust board members and members of THSC Flags and Return of the Shelf. Um, we saw the ticketing charter and were absolutely disgusted with some of the things in there, particularly around concessions. Um, and I think in particular why we've been quite angry about it is just watching the slow erosion of concessions and now senior concessions over the years at Spurs. Um, so just to give a bit of a background on sort of the facts around it, um, concessions are only available in the ground in particular areas 
those areas are priced at £1,200. Under £1,200, you can get a, a senior concession. Um, so that would be your South Stand, your North Stand and bits of the East and West, but very few. But not only is it limited to specific areas of the ground, there's also subject, the amount of tickets is subject to availability per block. And we don't actually know what those figures are. So within those blocks, they're limiting the numbers of concessions available to balance the ticketing type. So you'll have like X amount of senior concessions available for season ticket holders, X amount of senior for members, junior, young, young adult, adults, et cetera. Um, and we don't know what that balance is. So you've got a very limited supply of tickets and subject to demand, you, which would show sort of what's available. So you can't guarantee you'd get concession anyway. There's no concessions available on ticket exchange. So you can't buy a senior price ticket on the exchange. They all go up at adult rate. And we've seen a slow erosion of members on of, of seniors concessions. So with memberships, for example, they removed senior memberships as a option. So you have to buy an adult membership now. They've removed senior um, pricing at domestic cup games. So again, those are priced at adult prices. And there's been an erosion with season tickets where people are, haven't been able to get access to a, se a senior concession rate because if they sit in a non-concessionary area, they can't access it. And when they try and move to a concessionary area, they're not guaranteed a ticket because they say essentially they've run out of senior concessions. So that's kind of where we were at. And then the ticketing charters come out. And essentially what they've said is for members, you can still get senior tickets, but they're going to be increasing the age of that to match retirement age. And that will continue. So from 20, so from basically the, when is it going to 65? It's going to 66, isn't it, from next year. So next year, 66, you'll, you'll be able to get a senior ticket if you're a member. And then it will go up with, with retirement age as it continues. So you'll just be getting older and older and older to get an access ticket. With season tickets, if you've already got a senior concessionary season ticket, you will still be able to access the 50% discount for next season. But then that's going to reduce over five years and then end up on 25 percent. If you turn 20, if you turn 65 by the 18th of August this year, then you'll be eligible for a senior concession. So that's the last time you're going to be able to get a senior concession. After that, from 2025 to 26, no more senior concessions are going to be available for season ticket holders. So from 25, 26 season, the only way you can access a senior concession, if you haven't already got one, is through primary sales when they go on sale. And you can't get them on tax, on ticket exchange. So basically, you're just not going to be able to access it at all. Um, so you've kind of kind of seen the pattern here of how it's completely being eroded and we don't think that's fair we think it's immoral we think it's not it's it's basically punishing people that have been fans for decades season ticket holders for decades it's not rewarding loyalty and it's basically to put it bluntly sh shitting on loyalty and the way they phrased it was awful they kind of implied that um we're not we're not dying quick enough essentially is how they kind of put it <laughs> <laughs> we've got too many too many seniors we can't give you a concessionary discount there's too many of you sorry um so yeah that's kind of a summary um i'll pass you over to annalisa so she can give you a bit more of a update As someone who's not is not dying quick enough yeah i think um i think what comes across to me is it's, it's as if do they not want older people to be coming to the games anymore or it, it, um you know I think they should be celebrating the fact that people have been going there since the 1960s, you know, continuously year on year as season ticket holders. Um, I've got my first season ticket in about in the mid 1980s. I had a couple of years off for good behaviour in the 90s, but I've been going as a season ticket holder since then. I'm not quite at the senior concession age, but I'm heading rapidly in that direction. But what they said to me is all the years you've been coming, this kind of means nothing really. Um, and I think one of the shades of it is it risks is kind of risks, I think, breaking up family groups or, you know, breaking up fan groups. We know there's people, people in their 60s or 70s come with their children and come with their grandchildren. And there'll be a point where they have to make a decision on, like, how do I justify this as part of the wider household budget? Um, you know, 
I've been going with the same bunch of friends for years and years and years. We're all of a similar age. And there were years where we were kind of thinking, it's really the friends that keep you going because it, sometimes it sure wasn't the football. And so, again, you know, in five or ten years' time, we'll be in a position where some of us think, well, you know, either we can't afford it or we can't justify the price it's going anymore. So I feel it's kind of, um, you know, it's a club doing what it can to squeeze as much as it can out of as many as it can at a time when it doesn't really need to, given all its other revenue streams, which are far more lucrative than uh, us supporters. If I can just bring in, before I bring Jace in there, the club's feedback or reply to obviously why they are doing this, essentially, is that the club have essentially stated that the number of senior syndicates get, get held at the top of the stadium has risen to almost four times the number at White Hart Lane and that the increase is clearly not sustainable. But I will add, it was revealed this month that Spurs make just under £6 million per game in match day income compared to below one million a game that they would have received at White Hart Lane, Spurs' old home. Jace, I'll bring you in. Thoughts on this for you? Well, well, the the, the thing about four times the the number, you have to bear in mind the, the ground is is effectively twice the size as well. So you know, as a proportion, of course, it's not four times the number; it's maybe double the number in that respect in proportion, but. I saw, um, I was just trying to find the tweet today, a, a, a letter to a, a, a season ticket holder querying the, why it's done. And it just the, the tone of it, I mean, you're right. And, uh, and so it's, it's not just, it's not just they're done, it's how they present these things. And, and the, the form of the letter really did read, well, you know, we, we effectively want a different demographic of supporter and, you're becoming a bit of a nuisance. It, it, that's how it, how it, it was, wasn't obviously phrased in those words, but when, when you read the note, it, it was such an impersonal way of describing it that you know, you're almost becoming a nuisance because maybe you don't spend enough in the club shop or maybe you don't do this or maybe you don't do that. And so actually, you know, we'd, we'd sooner move you lot on and bring in a, another type of supporter. That's, that's the kind of in, interpersonal way that it's been presented. And, and like, like I said, with, with so many things that Tottenham do, it's it's not just the content, it's the way they present it. And you just, you know, there's more and more people just feel like, oh, well, I'm a customer, I'm not a supporter. And and that's that's the really sad part of Tottenham at the moment. Yeah, I think it was the, uh, the same letter that I saw. I think I had it up on my screen. Actually, it said that, uh, you know, the level of increase of older supporters is not sustainable and would have limited like that, yeah. choice limited ticket choice for other supporters and i'm not kind of sure what that means because sure the number of people that go into the ground means there's limited number of tickets elsewhere but it mean I, I don't know what that means does that mean they want to get rid of older supporters because they want younger supporters but uh, that's I, how it I, is that's, but that's the not, impression you got from it. yeah so they're not making it easy for younger supporters it's, no you know it's expensive for them as well yeah, I mean, it so, reads to me that essentially, if they're saying that there is limiting tickets for others, what they're saying is it's limiting the amount of tickets they can sell at adult price. Yeah, 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 and 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 that's that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, we're already a club that that's effectively. I mean, we are we the dearest now in the country? I think we are, aren't we? Or what's up there? Yeah. And when you think England is dearer than anywhere else in the world, you could say we're the dearest club in the world, and yet it's continuing to squeeze. There's all the justifications of of overseas games in in Australia and going to Korea this winter and Lady Gaga's and concert. We've had rugby at the weekend, and yet it's still come on. Let's let's squeeze an extra few quid out, and it just seems, just seems, just it's it's just fundamentally wrong the way they're doing it, Rick. That's for sure. I mean, look, you guys are here because ultimately there is a cause of concern amongst not just, I would say, in relation to younger supporters, but again, the directly who this impacts is the older fans as well. I mean, guys, the clear indication of what you want to try and do here, tell us what the plan is for you guys in terms of the creation of this fan movement. What do you want to see happen? How can fans really help get involved and really try and drive this? Because... um. I think what taught us a lot was obviously with the Super League, whatever people thought about that, 
that it was a lot to do with fan power, not just from Tottenham, but from clubs all around the country. They were affecting, obviously, that top six element in terms of the Premier League, that fans come together and affected change. I think it's well worth noting the fact that there's already been a letter sent to the Premier League with relation to the fact that there is a feeling that this is not only immoral, but the fact there is actually a broken code of conduct there in the actual Premier League uh, registration manual. Believe I'm, believe I'm not wrong that this is fundamentally wrong. And Thula, how do you see this playing out? What do you want to see happen? And how can people get involved to obviously help the calls? And what are you guys obviously targeting ahead of the coming weeks? Yeah, of course. Um, so what we're calling for is a full reversal of them getting rid of the of concessions. So we don't want them to be like from 25, 26 season, no more senior concessions are available for season ticket holders. That needs to be reversed. And we also don't want the reduction to 25% either. That wasn't consulted with the senior, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't consulted with, with the senior season ticket fan base. So why have you reduced it to 25% without consulting with them to see what, what affordability they've got? Not all old people are rich, believe it or not. Um, so we want a full reversal in that. And then going forwards, really, what and what to be fair, what the trust has also been, been promoting for years and what we agree with is that concessions should be linked to the person and not to the seat. So concessions should be available across the whole ground, not just in particular areas and not limited per block. Um, in terms of how people can get involved, they can contact us through our um, social media. So we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, and we've got our email address. Uh, we've had quite a few people email get in, actually, which has been really great, um, offering support and some help. Um, we've got something planned for the game on Saturday, but I can talk about that afterwards. Um, I'll just pass over to Annalisa in case I've missed anything in particular you want to mention. Uh, no, I was just going to say, don't forget to mention what we're, what we're going to do on Saturday. <laughs> we'll hammer that home. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to explain that. So basically on Saturday, we've asked fans, so anyone that's going to the game, and please, please, please spread the message. Talk about it within the stadium as well. Talk about it on the 64th minute, 63rd minute, right before, but the 65th minute. So when the clock turns 65, we want everyone to turn their backs to the from the pitch for a minute. It's a very simple task. It's not going to take long. It doesn't take much effort. It's just to show that the club have turned their backs on seniors who are, who are turning 65. They will not be able to access this discount. We are going to turn our backs on them for a minute. OK, it's it's a very simple thing. It, and it would be great if everyone could get involved. And please just talk about it. Spread the word. You, you know what's happening, don't you? Son's getting a penalty in the 65th minute. Jason, don't say that. <laughs> no, I think, I think, oh, Absolutely see it now. <laughs> I think we're relying on the fact that we've got the habit of... Well, you can't watch it on the jumbo screens. Yeah, you can want to watch it on the screen, there you go. Yeah, the screen. I think it does well. We're a bit of a second half team, so the problem is we've already really, really will happen. Like I mentioned it on our show yesterday. I think the last time we scored in the first half was back in December in the Everton game. So that could probably happen. I mean, Jason's probably right there. I mean, my like, good thing is if the penalty is given in the 65th minute, VAR won't confirm it until the 74th. So that, that'll be all right. We'll lose nine minutes, at least. Sorry, I think we're relying on the habit of scoring a flurry of goals immediately after half time. Mm. So, and then. You know, Double and we'll yeah. have then settled down by the 65th minute. And, yeah. I mean, uh, just to be very, very clear, I mean, look, you know, from your past, obviously, in terms of obviously being part of the trust there, that, you know, some fans will feel that sometimes there's never enough that's done. I mean, the, the one thing that might be labelled, I hope you don't mind me saying, is the fact that what kind of impact is that going to really make in terms of turning the backs? I mean, what, what do you feel that's going to really gain out of this in terms of a real change from the club's mood on this or reverse or what 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 can you see happening by the fact of turning our backs what what can you see that actually make a difference if you don't mind me asking that question yeah, that's absolutely fine um for, from a personal point of view i think it'd be really great for media to pick up on i think it'll be a really good sort of demonstration of fan power and fans getting together to show how disgruntled they are as a decision that is quite frankly disgusting and I, I think it's a starting point. It, you know, I don't think, I personally don't think just turning your backs for one for one game is going to completely get them to reverse their decision. But it's a starting point and something that we can build on and something that people easily can get involved with to begin with. 
Um, and it's it's just got that something about it with the fact that they turned our backs on they've turned their backs on seniors and we're going to turn our backs on them. I think there's just something to that that's quite. I can't really put my finger on it to explain it. I don't know if Annalise can sort of articulate it better, but it's it's just it, it's just a powerful thing. I think. Yeah, and I also think it's a very just a very straight straightforward ask of people that is not you know that it's something very easy to do people will be back from the bars you know after half time as i said the match will be fine it'll be quiet then um and i think i think i don't know if it's if football can often help make make us be cynical and it's kind of then easy to say oh that won't achieve anything or you know or what's the point or so on but you won't achieve anything if you don't start doing Absolutely. something That's yeah sure. it's got to be it's got to start somewhere i mean what i would say is jay's coming over to you that um, and just spoken a lot about the impact of his own family, his father, and particularly the the fact that you know again having that influence there, being at stadiums in the past when he was younger, and of course you know having that element of obviously some of the older fans in there that can really again relate to again the fact of you know the way that was changed as well. And again, I wonder whether someone like him that does draw a lot in terms of fans and the impact from that, whether again. He can't come out in public and say that whether that again maybe just makes him think twice about the nature of the way your artisan making is at times because um he talks a lot about getting fans on side and then there we are as a board at times making life harder for him and he knows all about that from day one of course when he lost his star striker can't before the season started right yeah i mean he's he's um his last press conference when he was talking about plastic tourist fans was just just a brilliant answer wasn't it and uh and everyone resonated and and I can't think there was anyone that disagreed with what he said. So it would be uh, it would be nice if uh, Bridgie or whoever is uh, is doing the uh, Sky Sky feed was to raise the subject. But um, you know, obviously he has the right hand man there that will be probably tipping him off. But you know, he's a decent bloke, Ange, and I, I think um, you're right. It's just. Like I keep saying, it's just the wrong decision. It's morally wrong what, what Tottenham have done here. And uh, I mean, it's, it's any other club proposing the, the similar type of um, similar type of slash on concessionary prices. So Arsenal did it a couple of weeks before we did, um, before we announced it. I imagine that's not a coincidence. Um, I think two big London clubs doing that sets a dangerous precedent for the rest of the clubs across the Premier League. Um, make no mistake, they all benchmark against each other. They all look at each yep. other's pricing strategies and they try to match things as best they can. So it sets a very dangerous precedent, which is another sort of big reason why we should stand up and oppose it. Um, we're seeing erosion of concessions across the Premier League. It's, it's a Premier League issue. Um, so it's, it's quite dangerous and I also am quite worried if this was left unchecked what other concessions may be eroded in the future um I think it's it's just a, a very dangerous precedent overall the, the playoff to that of course may be that as as other clubs start to follow the um follow the example that sometimes helps the movement and, and brings then then you're not just talking oh it's Tottenham supporters are moaning and Arsenal supporters are moaning suddenly it's and Liverpool supporters and Southampton supporters and Leeds supporters and it it does bring it together then and starts to get questions asked in uh, in government circles and with this um, you know regulator and such coming on board in in a wide way that might actually help if one or two others did it but I I totally understand what you mean it's it's just something that needs to be sorted quickly that's for sure. I mean, as again, why you look back at the obviously, of course, the the fan movement around the European Super League. They went after the top six clubs in the Premier League, and I think again, when you look at those demographics of fan bases, you're talking about you know again, with no respect to the other clubs in the league, there were some of those powerful or oh, such biggest fan bases there were in the league, and therefore that was a real, I think, momentum shift that would allow the fans to challenge that. So look, I mean, again, I don't know whether Anthony, it's worth mentioning. Has there been not that we're an Arsenal podcast, but I mean, has there been any kind of you know? feedback from those guys over there in terms of the fact that they're trying to also get behind some form of a campaign or is there a difference being that Arsenal at the moment I don't want to be speaking about them as a Tottenham podcast but they've never got the justification of doing that because of their league position but when you take that away from it at the same time you know why should that 
basically stop a section of fans being able to attend games, regardless of how well clubs are doing. I mean, you can argue in with Tottenham that it's been the first time in however many years that we have suddenly got a brand of football for many that can be recognisable to what they've imagined in the past. Especially, again, with no disrespect to a lot of the older fans that, again, following Tottenham and Jace, you've always said this from your perspective, it's a lot about how we play how we obviously are going to attack games and why, again, it's been really enjoyable this season because we've no disrespect if you are a you know a, a fan of a club like Tottenham, we know we don't tend to win a huge amount of trophies and many will ban all that as, as much as they want to. But I think the key thing is if you're not winning trophies and you're not competing for the league, I think the one thing you do want to see to some degree, many would want to see, is a brand of football. And you've got that for the first time in three to four years. And again, it's just... Like Jason said at the very, very top of the show, whenever they've got something good going on, there's always a spanner thrown into the works where it's just so unnecessary, right, Jason? It's just so unnecessary. And it, it's also come at a time where they're announcing a 17-storey hotel. So, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? We can, we, can strip, we can strip a million quid off the pensioners, but we can then afford a 17-storey hotel, which will cost how many millions? It's, uh, you know, when, when you look at the correlation, you think, come on, Come on, read read the room. Read the room. And just in well, the number of well, old, old, old folk they think are in the ground, maybe it should be a, a 17 story care home or something. Like that. Perhaps that's what they're going to do. Put, put you all on the top floor of the hotel and look in from the, the pitch that way or something. I mean, obviously, this is on the eve as well. I'm sure they're going to be dropping those financial results very, very soon that are going to be one of the most impressive set of results for quite a considerable yeah. amount of time. And you consider, of course, Formula One's in there now, the concerts, the boxing, NFL. Just a rugby, sixty-two thousand in the rugby. Yeah, also, I mean, I think. Sorry, I think Jason, you mentioned earlier. You know, maybe Ange could be asked about this at his press conference. But I think we can guess what he'd say in terms of, you know, fans basically can do. You know, he's not going to tell us how to think or feel. No, but no. to me, it's not the manager that should be being asked those questions. No. They, they shouldn't have to front that up. No. So it should be, you know, people from the board should be should be being there, being asked to justify it. Totally agree. Um, and Thula, before we reinstate that message ahead of the game on Saturday, I know you've had a few messages that have come back and you maybe want to debunk a couple of theories maybe out there that some are suggesting that this isn't a terrible thing to happen. Do you want to come back on some of those queries where maybe some are suggesting that it's not a direct impact to some of those older fans? Yeah, I mean, I've, I, not all old people are rich. You can't assume that. Um, I think I've seen a few people sort of say, oh, but it's the it's younger fans that need the discounts. And yes, I agree, younger fans do need discounts. And there are junior concessions and the trust fought very, very hard for the young adult category, which is the 18 to 21 age, age category. That was fought very hard by the trust to get. Um, and I agree. And if those were being taken away, of course, we'd be up in arms about that as well. We'd have another movement saying, save our youngsters or something like that. I've just made that up on the spot. It's terrible. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, it, this is about seniors because that's the biggest concessionary chunk that's been completely eroded by this, this the, the ticket charter. So I don't think it's a either or situation. And I think, like I said earlier, it sets a dangerous precedent for if you're eroding one area of concessions, what's to say if you get away with that, you won't erode another set? Um, I'm pretty sure that there's no young adult category at the moment for domestic cup games. I think they took that away too. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's, it's a very dangerous game to play to be like, which concession is, more, is worth more? Um, I think it's important to reward the loyalty of your fans that have been season ticket holders for decades and decades. Um, you know, they've been season ticket holders for years and then they're, they're like, oh, when I hit 65, I'm going to get a reward for that. And then that's completely been taken away. And that's not fair at all. That's not the principles of our club. And it, it's it's extremely unfair. And I don't think it's an either or situation. So, yeah, cause I, th I think I'd add to that as well. If, you know, if Spurs were saying, well, you know, we looked at our we looked at our sums and they don't add up. So we're gonna, you know, consult you about maybe taking a bit off the seniors, but giving it to to young adults. Well, that's a whole different conversation. But they're not doing that, as Antula said. They're just they're just taking it off the seniors. They're not they're not making it easier for anyone else. Um, and you know, I think as I said before, if they if it, if it starts here, it's not going to end here. No, 
Mm. And, and I think what Anthony said as well about the trust um, managing to get concessions for young adults, that shows that football fans can achieve things. So it's, you know, no good going on Saturday saying, oh, you can't change anything because we've proved in the past that we can change things. Yep. And again, without that belief that things can change, I mean, will, because ultimately there's got to be that belief that, again, even a situation like this, that if fans do come together, I like you said, Anthony, it's a starting block. It's not the ultimate pathway to maybe the full reversal but it's got to start somewhere and look credit to you guys for trying to do something about it because again we know it has directly impacted a number of again loyal football fans that have been watching this club for so many years and again you look at the point of when those fans started watching this football club and the years they've given in what's be honest about it you know you look at the last again so I want to depress people the last 15 20 years of Knowing the calibre of football we've watched, the, la- the nature of the lack of success in terms of trophies, the reward for that now is the removal of the concession states, uh, which again just is really, really hard to take. Jace, is there a final message from you? On yeah, I mean, I mean, just a query as well. I mean, obviously, the, the Saturday's game, Luton, the three o'clock kickoff. So, you know, there isn't the live coverage that um, perhaps is there around other fixtures. Um, it. Are we just looking at the Luton game or do we reassess after the Luton game and look at the, the Forest game, which now is is live, I think, now on, in case anyone doesn't realise, it's been moved to the Sunday at 6 o'clock. I think it's 6 o'clock kickoff, isn't it? So oh, yeah. do we yeah. just start with Luton and then leave it for a time or do we try and then do something around further games where, where perhaps the exposure is bigger because they're live TV games? And obviously coming this season... Man City is going to be a live game. Arsenal is going to be a live game. I, I pretty much think all of our games will end up being live from now to the end of the season. It's a great point. And Annalise, you got an opinion on that one? Go for it, Annalise. No, go on. You. So, yeah, I agree. Um, I think we see what happens at the looting game and then we take that forward. Um, but... You know, I think everyone needs to get involved at Luton. I think, can you can you just imagine like, looking at the South Sand and seeing 17,000 people just turn their backs for a minute? Um, that would be a picture. And then even if you get the whole, like the whole stadium or some parts of the stadium, it would be brilliant. Um, and that's a brilliant starting point. And then, yeah, we'd look to, to continue that it on. And in particular, we've got a live game coming up um, on TV with the Forest game now. So... Of course, we'd look to do something again, but we have to see what's going to happen. Yeah. I turned my back on every game and I went to under Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> you retired at one point. Any time looking at the pitch, it was usually at the back of the stand. <laughs> oh, dear. Listen, um, guys, let's reinforce that message then for you ahead of the game on Saturday. And Thula and Elise, feel free. Once again, that message ahead of obviously kick off to those fans that are going to be attending at the top of the stadium, 3 p.m. for Luton. What do we want to see, guys? We can maybe go to Annalise to reinforce that if you wish, or Anthula. Who wants to take that on? Annalise, you want to go for yeah, it? We want to see your backs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 65th minute, 65-0-0. Turn your backs to the, to, the, to the pitch for one minute. That's all we're asking for. And please spread the message, because some people may not have heard this, may not have seen it on socials please when you get into the stadium and you're around people did you hear that we're going to be doing this on the 65th minute and everyone just get people to be doing it um please get involved because it's not fair what the club are doing and this needs to be overturned what are, what are socials and for lucas we need people liking and following and retweeting and things like that so twitter and facebook are the same it's save our senior 66 and then our email address is save our seniors four at gmail.com um if you have ideas if you want to get involved with the campaign please 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 do email in we need bodies we need like-minded people bring your skills any skills you've got please email in uh where we you know we need bodies we're very aware that just a small group of people isn't gonna shift the dial we need we need big numbers, big, numbers. Big numbers. It, 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 it is something as well that it shouldn't just be um <clears throat> It shouldn't just be of interest to seniors. As, as you yeah. say, this is the start of stripping of concessions. The club get away with this. They do more. And, and it does affect all of us because we will all become senior or we will bring 
kids to games or youth to games, hopefully in the future. I mean, Rick, you know, you, you'll be taking your boy to football in four or five years' time. So, yeah. you know, you want your concessions in place to be able to do that. And oh, football yeah. creates so many, I mean, probably most of us, probably, I don't know what a percentage, but most of us end up going with our dads or mums in the first place, which is, is what takes us to football. And the amount of family memories that that creates, and that's part of what gets lost in football of this, got to win a trophy, got to win a trophy. I went to football to enjoy a day out with my dad. And that, that's as simple as that. And, you know, you don't win a trophy in October, November, December, January and February. But the memories you create as a family group and with people around you last a lot longer than a trophy does in May that you hand back a year later. So, you know, it is really important, these types of things, to, to, to stress that. And as I say, it's not just seniors that will be impacted. It can be all of us in time will either reach one way or we'll try and bring younger people to the stadium. It's like the entire that as well. fan base. It affects the entire yeah. fan base. You're bringing yeah. in people from family. It's cross. It's cross generational support. That's yeah. what. Our, that's what cl our club fan base exactly. is on. And that's going to completely change dynamic if you're pricing pricing seniors out. Yeah. So, and I think what's also key, if I can just mention and let you guys come back in. No one, no one forgets their first time when they walk up those steps to the stadium and they're being taken by or supervised by someone, whether that's a mum or a dad or a family member, an uncle, an aunt, who, again, would be maybe directly affected like this in the future because, of, again, where this is going in terms of the prices. So I'd put that in everybody's mind that, as Jason said there so eloquently, you know, whilst it might not impact your age bracket, um, this will most certainly impact those people that you go to games with or friends of friends or family. So I think that is really, really important to keep in the mind. But, um, guys, thank you so much. I think we'll all agree, really, it's not a show that none of us really want to do. You know, in an ideal world, we wouldn't want to be sitting here talking about this kind of subject. We'd rather be talking here, sitting here talking about Spurs, winning games, doing well, progressing under Rand. So it's really, I think, unfortunate we've got to do a show like this. But look, this is the whole reason why last one on Spurs is here as a platform is to be able to dissect, debate, discuss good, bad, ugly things of Tottenham Hotspur at times. And let's hope, let's hope common sense prevails, Anthula, and we get the right result, right? Fingers crossed. 100%. Let's get Amazing. them to reverse it. Amazing. Listen, can I just say massive thank you, Jace? Thank you so much. I'll just you, yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what you're going to be doing at Legion. <laughs> you're doing very well. Jace is trying to turn his back on me for the last seven, eight years, and I don't ever let him, so that's, I'm used to that. Um, Jace, thank you so much. Um, Annalise, lovely to have you on here. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, great. Thanks, Ricky. Amazing. And Anthula, thank you so much. Keep on the campaign and keep on fighting. Bless you. You come back in all different lifestyles, you do, I tell you. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. Listen, bless you. Thank you so much. Well, guys, there you go. That message reinforced there by this wonderful panel ahead of Saturday to come against Luton. You know what you need to do. Uh, from myself, from Jason, from Annalise and from Anthula, from the Save Our Seniors organisation, guys, do what you need to do. Keep safe, keep well. Thank you to your support as always. And come on, you Spurs.